promotion. There's a moat. And Splatoon 3. So on that day, Alexman here. And I just came out in the Splatoon 3 Direct in shock. Not just like the dabbing thing, but just like the whole thing. I'm in shock. So of course, the best way is to turn on some Splatoon lo-fi and just make a video about it. So here I am making a video about it. Let's get into it. The new stages are just fine. None of them really just stick out to me, except Hagglefish Market, which was shown here for the first time. This just looks like a fun stage, especially since it looks like there's just not much great, which is an annoying gripe with, I have with like a lot of water stages, specifically the, um, that one in Splatoon 2, I forgot the name of it. Burning Sage stages are just really where it's at for this game. Museum the Alfonso is pretty cool, specifically like the road hang platforms it has, which I think should, could cause some chaos. Get it? Chaos. The Red Bridge is a very straight stage, which I don't really like as much because there's just not a lot of space to like move around, and oftentimes I'm just gonna be sniped by Charger. Which it just isn't really that fun, you know. I specifically like Mahi Mahi Resort though. Some of the platforms sink and rise over time, which is such a fun gimmick. I think it'll be enjoyable to play on. Also from Splatoon 2, Wahoo World and Maker Mart, among others, will make a return. I'm specifically hyped for these two because they are some of my favorites from Splatoon 2. We also will see Sturgeon Sip Shipyard and Inqua Art Academy. I like swords, and Splatanas are basic, basically that fun Splatoon. It's it's a this is a new um, weapon type that they're introducing in the game, and it seems like just to be a mix of the ink brush and the roller, plus some other elements. But yeah, it seems fun, it's probably my new main. The new specials announced in this, this, this direct are as follows. The Tactic Cooler, the Wave Breaker, and the re re Slider. The Tactic Cooler is kind of like a soda machine, and when touched, it will provide the user and, and its teammates with special buffs. It seems like something that sweat slash competitive people will use, but and just abuse the heck out of it. This, the wave breaker sends out these waves and your inkling slash offering will have to jump over it or else they'll be trapped and also take damage. It sort of reminds me of those like Roblox obby things. I don't really have footage for it, uh, so uh, yeah. The re-slider is a shark that can slide around and cause like a huge explosion. It sort of reminds me from the Kraken from Splatoon 1, but just less OP. Hit Tenta Missiles, Inkjet, Inkstorm, Ultra Stamp, and Booyah Bomb will be returning from Splatoon 2. These were my favorite specials from Splatoon 2, so I'm super hyped for them to return. They'll need a huge buff to really stand a chance in combat battles, because uh, they probably won't be that good. Still, I'm especially excited for Ultra Stamp and Booyah Bomb, though. Sheldon is making a return once again to sell weapons. This time, however, you can buy weapons with with only one currency, and that currency is called Sheldon Licenses. It seems a bit grindy to get, but who really knows? The clothing shopkeepers are a lot more likable in this game. Gnarly Eddie and Nail sell headgear. I find them pretty gnarly. The shirt shopkeeper is just a jelly. Mr. Coco, however, who sells shoes, is amazing. I like it. Rich from Splatoon 2 is also now a teenager, so that's pretty cool. Although I never cared for gear abilities very much in Rush Swim Street. So I like using merch to get my good get some good gear, you know. Alright, now let's go through a number of quality of life features. In this game we can skip the noobs. Woo! Yeah! Honestly, it's just so annoying just going through the news and mashing the A button. Like it was just <sighs> Next we got the test range. It's decent, but you can actually test stuff out while you're waiting in a lobby in the lobby. Um additionally you can also use the players in the lobby called Flatlands Lobby, um called Ghost and actually join up with them. For Turf War, you can also just start a team together and with friends and go into a game too. We haven't really gotten much details about that, so but this was like what I was ill to get get yeah we also have a proper replay mode this will be really cool to create montages and highlight just cool kills you can also share this probably with twitter but maybe actually it'll appear in the 
in the lobby. There's also a new photo mode where you, get, where you can dab and stuff. This was a feature exclusive to Mevo for some reason in the previous two games, but I'm happy they're bringing it back without Amiibo, because who wants to do that? Additionally, the recon mode has been approved, so you can select any map you want at any time. Precious Fits. Fits allows you to save out outfits, which is something that we've wanted for so long. I'm glad that they're finally adding it into the game. Rank battles have been renamed to Anarchy Battles, and you can actually either join solo or with some other people. And this means that you can join with, um, friends. Yeah. Uh, also, all game modes are confirmed for this game, including Clan Blitz, which are going to be on rotation. I, I never really like Clan Blitz, so I'm a bit sad, but that's fine, I guess. It's not a huge deal breaker. Private Battles also returned, which is great. There's also a new part of the lobby called the locker room, where you can fill your locker with all sorts of gizmos and gadgets and stuff. You can buy these things from a general store. Table Turf Battle is also, also, also a new mini game in the lobby, apparently. I don't, I don't know, like, at all how this really works. You can get a deck or something. I just don't know, man. There's also splash tags, which is play at the start of the match, and you can change the background and the title of it. This is a feature that I've really wanted, and I'm glad they're bringing it in. Salmon Run got some new sh stuff shown off. The Salmon Lid is a new boss salmonoid who creates a barrier and protects salmonoids on the ground. We get close and it slams down our ice, and that's how you really defeat it. I don't know, it, it sort of reminds me of like a UFO for some reason. I don't know why, it just does. The Big Shot is another new boss salmonoid that fires big egg things from a cannon and you have to defeat it. It's very big. Sometimes I, and there's like a chunky boy that comes along and you have to defeat it by throwing eggs at it. Why? Does it work? I don't know, man. I don't know. The story mode just doesn't really look too different from Splatoon 1 or 2's campaigns. All it seems like is just like adding cutscenes, but that's really it. Just a glorified tutorial. Additionally, the way they like talk about it just seemed like this would be just a case. Take a listen for yourself. Observe this manhole in Splatsville Square. This is actually the entrance to the home of the Octarians. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. Story mode is perfect for getting familiar with inking turf and using weapons. Perfect for getting familiar with inking turf and using weapons. Finally, we have the idols named Deep Cut. Unlike the past two games, there's actually three idols in this game. We have Shiver, Fry, and finally, Big Man. Shiver and Fry specifically are very different from the previous two idol groups. I just don't really like their design though. I don't know. It's just like Big Man though is my man. I shall treasure him forever. Flatfests are returning, obviously, but there's a unique twist. There's actually free team. I find this so cool. I, I just know they're just gonna make a Pokemon Star and Violet Flatless with Spirit Tito, Hueco, and Coco, and Quaxley. I just know it. And if it if, and if they don't that's a huge missed opportunity, Nintendo. I'm just saying, bro. I'm just... In the first part of the Splatfest, teams will clash out normally in a 4v4 turf war. In the second half, though, there will be a twist. Four players on the Splatfest team that is currently winning will start in the middle of the stage. Two players from the second and two players from the third place team, however, will start at the opposite ends and attack the four people on the winning team. This is complicated, but seems just like a fun fun time, you know? It's, it just seems fun just to, um, get, get together and, um, just play against the winning team, you know? But, uh, we can't, but who knows? We can't really tell until we play it. But, in fact, they actually announced this Flatfest World premiere for Splatoon 3 on August 27th, and the theme will be rock, paper, scissors. I don't know which one I want to pick, I'm thinking scissors, mainly because Big Man shows and also this seems cool. Post launch updates will also be added seasonally, featuring Splatfest, new weapons on new gear, until 2024, I think. Kinda like Fortnite.